Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today, probably for the first time in about two years, I'm going to do some actual direct tips, tuition type of thing. So today's video is five tips for ICM photography. Anyways, let's do some shooting. Oh, beautiful. So tip number one is get one of these, a six stop filter. Now a lot of you out there will have a 10 stop filter or maybe if you do a lot of video you'll have a two or three stop filter. I highly recommend getting a six stop filter. A six stop is that ideal density to be able to use it in all manner of situations. Whereas on very, very bright days, you can get your length of exposure that you require and on darker days or going deep into the evening. So you're not getting exposures that are really, really long, going into the five, 10, 20, 30 seconds kind of exposures. You don't want to be getting that far. Say if you only had a 10 stop filter, that's the kind of lens you would be getting and that's not much use. And also just because I use a circular style uh, ND filter, any shaped ND filter will do the job. Not a problem at all. Just be, me, just be mindful that in your filter systems that your filters are secure because in ICM photography, your movements might get quite, quite random and quite violent. So just make sure that your filters are very, very secure. So moving on to tip two, and this comes down to your settings. Shoot in manual, also learn and understand the exposure triangle my typical camera settings are base ISO, so ISO 100, say. A shutter speed, depending on your subject and lighting conditions, of a minimum of a fifth of a second. And I usually go no further than two seconds. And everything else is controlled by the f-stop. So if I'm shooting in it, and the images are a bit dark, I'll open the f-stop up a little bit further, lighten, get, get the exposures lighter, uh, just trying to achieve a, a fairly balanced image. So that's my objective when I'm out there making ICM images, is to get a balanced exposure so I can take it back and use all the data fully in Photoshop, in Lightroom, to get the, to get the most out of it as what I can. So tip number three is to uh, choose the right subject. Now what you're looking for is contrast. A contrast in colour, contrast in light, contrast in composition as well. Look for, look for dark subjects against a skyline, look for bright whites in a, in a dark background, say a silver birches in a dark woodland, look for buildings protruding over a horizon and also make sure your subject is very strong in the image because your movement will blur most of that away. So if you start with a, with a strong subject, so the element of that is gonna be retained. So tip four is all about movement. Um, movement is not just ICM photography where all you do is move the camera up and down like so in a woodland or go, go down to the coastline to the beach and then move left and right you can be a little bit more imaginative and you can do a little bit more. Maybe it's not as extreme as sometimes what I do where I, I'm doing all this all in one shot. You don't need to go that far, but when, you look, when, you, when you're shooting, seek out your strong subject and just try moving the camera around it. You've got to use your, a bit of imagination, a bit of intuition to just experiment with your movements I mean, this kind of movement is something I do a lot of. And all I'm doing with that is bringing this sky down into the foreground. So 
my subject, whether it's be a castle or a tree or a whatever, I'm just trying to surround that by light, generally because I'm shooting a subject that protrudes above the horizon, I'm trying to surround that, that subject with light to, to define it much better, much clearer, uh, so I can retain that, that subject matter and the rest of and everything else can, can come about later on in the edit. So the other thing you should do is vary your movement as well. Don't get stuck with just one movement. You know, try, try, try lots of, <laughs> try lots of movement. You know, try, do try your lefts and rights, even though I say, get away from that as well. Vary it and always, always be checking the back of the camera as well. So after each shot, just, just you, just, just keep on chimping the back of, back of the screen there, uh, just to see what you've got. See if, if, if you get a nice movement, then you've got a chance of repeating it. If you've shot, 30, say, 30 shots, you look at the back of the camera, and then after 10 shots, there was one good frame, then you've got no real way of remembering what you actually did to, re to mimic that movement again, to enhance the possibility of getting another good, sh a good frame to use later on. So if, if you do, one movement, look, see what you've got, and if it's no good, try, try a slightly different variation. And also remember, if you're shooting, say, a subject like a tree, then, you know, move the camera around that way, but also move it around that way as well. Uh, and just again, to give yourselves the options of what you might be able to achieve with it in post as well. Remember, a lot of ICM photography, especially for me, is getting collecting data that I can use later on in whatever creative fashion that I that I need. You may not be comfortable with that, but if you can go in with the with base, for basic Lightroom adjustments, the the more you've got there to play with, the better. You've got more you've got more chance of getting something successful out of it. And my final tip for today, my fifth tip, is basically shoot lots. Don't, don't, don't expect to go out there to a location or aim your camera at a tree once. Shoot a couple of, a couple of, airy, a couple of shots and be done. You need, if you're early in your, in your time of playing with ICM photography, I would recommend get a hundred shots of that same, of that same view. Uh, just really, really playing with your movement variations just shoot lots and lots and lots as you get more as you get more and more comfortable with it you can probably come down to making 20 variations of that setup that's pretty much what i do i'll not move on or change my zoom length or my positioning say step to the step slightly to one side at each time i do that i will shoot 20 or 30 frames until i'm i'm, I'm happy that i've got at least four or five frames that immediately I can see is going to be useful. So that's my main, my main tip is to shoot lots and lots and lots. We've all got big SD cards these days. Please do fill them up. So hopefully that's a, a quick little basic tips video for you. Um, no doubt I'll be able to give you another five tips at, in, at a later date. Uh, so if you've enjoyed these tips find them found them useful please do so please do leave the video a thumbs up comment if it's been helpful and if you want to ha find out more about icm photography and processing of icm photography please do subscribe to the channels because there's lots more here and of course i've got my regular live streams as well to to help you along so yeah great to get another little video out for you that's not something to do with updating you on the coronavirus and all that horrible stuff uh, it's good to be out and about so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one so until the next video keep on see ya